If I could have just a second to use that board. Let me tell you this, guys. We, we're going to share with things with you because we, we're all in the same brotherhood. We're our brother's keeper. If you look at an internal floating roof tank right now, eyebrow vents, right? Around the tank. Anybody know why the eyebrow vents are built like that? I don't either. They put an expanded metal across this. Anybody got anything other than expanded metal on their eyebrow vents? Everybody's got it the same. What if this eyebrow vent had a hinge in it so that when you hit it with a water string, it backed up like a big swinging door? Then you could get foam in it. The other thing is, why is it only about 10 inches from here to here when if it was 15, we could get a hell of a lot more foam in it? So ask your people that are building tanks for you, if we were to get a new tank for them, why couldn't I have just a little deeper eyebrow vent so I could get foam in it from the ground? I've tried to hit these damn things a number of times, only by the grace of Oh God, can you get foam enough in there to make any difference at all? I've gone up in aerials and taken a piece of pipe and a ball and knocked the damn expanded metal out so I could hang foam making equipment off of an inch and a half pipe or dry chemical to put fire. <coughs> the fact is, we could redesign this only because we've been doing it this way, we're going to keep doing it. Doesn't make any sense, does it? You young men that's out there that's got engineering degrees that can talk to people in your tank designs, give consideration to something that either burns out or hinges so you can get in it. The other thing I'd like for you to think about is there's a seal around this thing, isn't it? The wiping seal, much like a floating roof tank. Right now, we're protecting to put foam in these seals, aren't we? And we think we're good. You're not. The chances are excellent you're not going to put the fire out. Why? How many of you have been inside an, open, an internal floor? What's in there besides the seal? Gauging well. Gauging well. A gauging well has got a collar on it like this, and it's a pipe that goes up, goes through the roof, so the guy that has got a ladder up here can gauge the product. Is it any good? Is it on spec? How deep is it? That gauging well's got slots cut all over it. All the way down. You think any vapor comes out of that damn thing? Hell yes. It's about what? This big around? It's got a collar on it to ensure you can't get any damn foam in it. Guess what else is in there? A manway, right? That manway is usually a piece of pipe that's cut almost in half with rings on it. So you can go in the bottom of the tank, climb up that ladder, and stand on top of this and look and see, how's it look? We're going to inspect it. It's this big around. It's open atmosphere to the fuel. So now we got this that will wick, and we got this. And this is all open liquid. So when you have a fire in here, do you think not that maybe it communicates to these? Absolutely. How do I know that? I've looked in it while they're burning. I'm an inquisitive son of a gun. I want to know why something's doing something so I can kill it. This tank had a big hole blown in it right here. This was in Guatemala. They put foam all the way around this five different times and it never went out. I gotta find out why. So while they're doing that, I go up, crawl out here, and I look down this hole, and I see flames dancing all across this area here. Little blue looking dancing flames. When they run out of foam, it lights this stuff back on. So when we did it, in those days, 
I went up here and I took a, a, an inch and a half handgun with dry chemical, exactly like this one for the most part. Got water fog in the bottom, drop powder in the top. I use the string to reach a hole about from here to John Snyder. And I popped the dry chemical and I shot it in the hole while I'm laying on the roof. And in two seconds, the whole damn tank was out. So what was the difference? The difference was we put an agent in this hole that created dry powder, fluffed, and it killed these two fires instantly. At a and we went up, took the prop at a and those of you who's been to Texas a and they have a, a shipboard prop. I put a 350 wheel unit in there, piped in two discharges, lit both floors off with reservoirs of fuel, fired it, and put the whole damn thing out with one 350. So I know that dry powder is excellent in confined spaces. Now, if you don't have it cooled off and it's hot, how many of you shot dry chemical in a hot fire? It always reacts, right? Always. Then it goes out. If it gets pissed off and you're laying up here and it blows this hinged roof off, this weak seam roof, you're going to be the first guy to see it go. <laughs> And that's the last thing you're going to see. So what we've done is we've come up with a tool that will allow you to go through with basically pipe you can buy Ace Hardware with a T on it and a nipple, and we're discharging dry chemical on both sides. And nobody's up here. You're doing it from the ground. That's what's missing. If you have internal floaters, you need to get with Chris and ride and talk to them about this package we've come up with to extinguish the, the this right here. If you've got a, a head here and a head here and a head on the opposite side, you'll kill this. How many of you don't think that 12 350s inside of a 120 foot diameter internal floor won't put it out? Hopefully none of you. But you need to shoot your phone first to cool everything off so you don't blow the damn roof off. You got a 55 minute shot of foam. Somewhere between 45 and 50. Pull the trigger on the dry cam. You will blow purple powder out of every orifice it has. And your fire will be out. If you don't use dry powder, the chances are better than good you're not going to put it out.